What's going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro back with another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Guys, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use the new color scopes or color wheels in Final Cut Pro 10 10.4, which is the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10 if I am not mistaken, unless I haven't checked the latest update, but I'm pretty sure this is the latest update of Final Cut Pro 10. All you gotta do is just click on this little triangle button next to the audio inspector and the video inspector. All right guys, so once you go to this effect here, which should be the color board inspector, which is super nice. So I am using Phase Rug's newest vlog right here. If you guys haven't seen it already, I suggest you guys do. So I wanna go ahead and color grade or uh, color correct this video here to make it look a little bit nicer, okay? So you guys can go ahead and change the values here. Go to the window and you go to workspaces and you go to color and, and effects here. And here you can go ahead and see every little detail of that color. As you can see, it gives you histograms. It gives you a luma right here, which is pretty cool. It gives you a vector scope. It gives you the RGB parade, which separates it from the grit, red, greens, and blues. And you also have a RGB overlay, which overlays that on top. And if you click on here, you can change it to a histogram, a vector scope, so you can see what is going on, whether there's more reds, more blues, more magentas. You can go to a waveform so you can see how much luma. It's pretty much the same thing over here, but you can just go ahead and adjust this to your liking. You can do channels, you can do units. There's a whole bunch of, of settings that you guys can change. This is already in the older version of Final Cut Pro 10. So we're gonna work with the new color corrections and that is the color wheels, color curves, and the hue and saturation curves. So we're gonna go to the color wheels, okay? And in the color wheels you have it kind of uh, it kind of reminds me of Adobe Premiere Pro with the Lumetri or Lumetri, I think that's how you call it. So we have here in the masters. So this right here gives you the color spectrum where you can change the global colors. So it it changes the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So right here is the saturation, and then over here is the brightness, and the same goes for each of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if we were to make this a little bit more saturated within the center of that, which means we're not changing the master or global colors, this will just increase the saturation or we can desaturate it and make it black and white. And what I wanna do is I wanna get a an orange and teal effect. I know some, a lot of you people like that effect, a lot of you guys don't. I love that effect, I think it's really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda skim through this video here. So we're gonna start adjusting the shadows so we can make the shadows a little bit more I don't know, teal, or we can make them a little bit more red, as you can see on the RGB parade, what's happening. So we have more of the reds, less of the blues, more of the blues and less of the reds. So this goes vice versa. I am not, I don't really ever change the shadows, but in the highlights I do. So we can make that a little bit more, I don't know, maybe a little bit more blue, more red. I'm gonna go a little bit more on the blue side, okay? Then we can adjust the midtones so we can make this a little bit more, I don't know, uh, cooler or warmer. I'm gonna go a little bit cooler on the cooler side, maybe like greenish. And here you can change the temperature. So you wanna always skim through the video to see what it looks like. So maybe the highlights, we wanna make these a little bit brighter, okay? So we can make it darker or brighter. Now we don't wanna over flatten this as you can see, so that's a little bit too bright. So we wanna go just enough, but not too much. The shadows here can make this more saturated or less saturated. So we can make that like that. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit on the shadows to make it a little bit dark. But we don't want to make it too dark where we can't see the details in his shirt, obviously. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the midtones, and I want it a little bit more in the midtones because if you look at this glass panel, we can tell it's there, but we can't at the same time. So by increasing the saturation of that of that color, we can go ahead and make it a little bit more uh, prominent. So if we increase this here, we can see it now taking place. So we don't want to overdo it as well, but you can see over here in the RGB overlay what's happening. So we have less color here and more color there. I'm gonna increase this quite a bit like around there and maybe make it brighter or less brighter, sorry. So we can make it darker or brighter. So here in the temperature, it gives you this now instead of what we had in the color board where we can make this a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer. I like to go a little bit on the warmer side. So I'm gonna drag this a little bit to the right, but you can also do that by clicking and dragging this down to make it, I believe cooler and dragging it up to make it warmer. So I'm gonna drag this down to, I'm actually gonna make this cooler, so I'm gonna drag this down. So in the tint, this will go ahead and change the tint of the video here. So if we go to the tint, we can make this a little bit more green, a little bit more of the magenta, and you can see that happening over on the left in the scopes there. So we have more greens, more reds and blues. So I'm gonna go a little bit left here and we're gonna go with the tint, okay? So hue, 
We can, you know, change the whole entire color there. Here in the master shadows and midtones and highlights are pretty much the same as the top, except they're in a numerical order, as you can see. So you can change it uh, according to numbers. So you can do like three here or four, and that will change it there. That's if you want to be exact or very precise. So I don't really change that just because I want to see visually what's happening and you can change the mix so you can do a before and an after as you can see it's a lot more cooler and I want to make this like I said a little bit more more green and a little bit more blue. So we're not going to change the master we're going to change the shadows so we're going to make the shadows I want to do ah oh man this is tough I'm going to do more green and then in the highlights I'm going to do more blue. So something like that, as you can see. So something like that. And then the midtones, you can, I don't know, kind of uh, balance it out. So we can do something around here, as you can see. So now we don't have it overly done, but you can see that it's very subtle. And you can definitely tell that right here in this video here. So we can do a before and after, and you can see a huge difference. There's more greens and more blues, as you can tell, and less reds as before. So. That's, if that's something you want to do, then go for it. Maybe we want to go ahead and not use the color wheel. So we can go into the color curves. The color curves are very, are kind of the same, but they're obviously a little bit more precise. So if you guys don't really know how to use the color curves, they're kind of like a, in Photoshop, if you add like a, a levels adjustment layer, it's sort of like that. So we have Luma. So Luma is pretty much the brightness and and it's pretty much the contrast of the video. So we, if on the very right, if that controls your darkness and on the left here, it increases the brightness or vice versa. As you can see, you can go down or you can go left. So kind of interesting. You can also like drag, like let's say we want to make this brighter. You can drag that up or maybe, I believe this is on the uh, shadows as you can tell because it's only adjusting the shadows. Maybe we can adjust the highlights or maybe you want to adjust the midtones. So if you want to adjust the midtones, click and then drag and you can see what's happening. Maybe you want another point here in between the midtones and the shadows, click and you can drag that there. So maybe you want this a little bit darker so we don't want to fade out his shirt so we can drag that down. So we can do something like that. You can also drag this up. You can do a whole bunch of effects here. So you can drag this up a little bit and make it more contrasty. And in the reds here, it can change this as well. So if you click on red, maybe you don't want full on red. Maybe you want a little bit more pink or a little bit more magenta or let's say there's more oranges or more yellows. We maybe want to change that. So we would want to go into here and we go a little bit left and we want to kind of match that color. So we're going to do orange, okay? And I don't, want, I don't really like that orange. So I want to go ahead and kind of get rid of it. Well, it's a little bit on the dark side. So we know that's going to be in the shadow. So I'm going to either go here and drag this down and you can tell it's kind of getting rid of it but it's also getting rid of his skin tone which isn't good i'm going to do a color mask for this so i want to adjust just this right here so click and drag that and select it just to the point where you're not selecting his face here because if you increase that that's selecting his whole face so i'm going to go i don't know around here and i also want to select a lot more up here so i'm going to drag this up but not to the point where it's adding all of his face. So now we have a good selection of that kind of brownish yellow look. So now if we go here, we have a inside and an outside mask. With this selected here, you can increase the softness or make it very harsh. But we can do outside so we can invert it if we want, but we're gonna go to the inside here. Now this will adjust certain values within that color that we selected. So we can make this darker as you can see and that will only get rid of it because we selected a mask without adjusting his skin tone color so this is a really really cool effect that you guys can do uh, i wouldn't call it an effect but a really cool technique or tip that you guys can do without adjusting any other of the colors so we can go and since it's orange we can drag this down even more until it matches all of the other colors here so you can be very precise with this tool and it looks super cool maybe you want to adjust the greens in that selection we can make it really green or really pink. I'm going to try to match it with the surrounding colors, so something like that. You also have Preserve Luma. I would have that checked just so it doesn't get dark. It just matches the brightness with the surrounding colors or the brightness around that uh, mask that we have. And you can adjust the mix here. So you can see it before and then after. 
And you can see how that works. It's kind of a little bit right here, but you can always adjust that as well. So that is the color curves. Like I said, it can change certain values here, but that's what it does. Now you also have the hue and saturation curves. So these are very similar as to the ones before. So if we click and drag this up, it's gonna make the walls really blue, or you can drag this down to make it a little bit more white. Okay, and you can do something like this. We can do more of the hue or more with the saturation. So we can make this a little bit more saturated with the hue or vice versa. I know it sounds really weird, but it goes hand in hand. So you can also do hue and luma or luma versus saturation or satcha saturation versus saturation. You can do a certain color, so you can do orange versus saturation. Um, so we can do blue, since so a little bit aqua, actually. So we're going to go a little bit aqua and saturation. So if we click and drag this up here, this will make it very blue or very white. If we go to the color wheels, it's sort of the same thing here. It's exactly the same thing, honestly. So this is adjusting the same thing up here, but a little bit more precise with the hue and saturation curves. So I would suggest you guys just play around with it and try it out and see what you guys can do with this. So like I said, I'm in no means a professional. So if you guys found this tutorial helpful in any way, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.